Good morning. Hey, so as you've probably seen, the uh, Search and Rescue Pinsgauer was nominated as one of the finalists in the Overland Expo Cool Rides contest. So since it's not available in person right at the moment for you to see, I thought I would do a quick shaky cam handheld iPhone video showing a couple of the key features of the Pinsgauer so uh, you can think about it and decide whether you want to vote for me or somebody else. I'll apologize in advance for the shaky nature. Uh, I don't have any kind of steady cam or anything with me. I just grabbed my phone, stopped down here by beautiful Lake Sammamish, Washington, so you could uh, get just a little bit of info. I'm going to try not to step in goose poop as I'm kind of walking around, but I thought I'd at least show you the, uh, give you a quick overview. So. Uh, first thing you might notice, well, I guess I should probably start with, it's a 1972 Pinsgauer 710M. Uh, it's ex-Swiss Army. Uh, when it was retired from the Swiss Army, I acquired it and have since built it from the ground up as a search and rescue vehicle. So most of what you notice looking at it is uh, changes that I made. Uh, so I'll start with some of the outside features and then go inside. Uh, First thing you'll notice, because I left the lights on, which I should turn off, I uh, swapped out a lot of the lighting and added quite a bit of additional lighting. Uh, in search and rescue missions, we routinely need quite a bit of additional lighting. Uh, at the top, uh, the Go Light LED striker uh, is on a plate. Uh, when I climb up to show you the roof rack, you can I'll show you that. Uh, so you can mount it either on the driver's side or the passenger side, so I can position the light where I need it. Uh, it is remote controlled, uh, so actually I actually have the remote here. Uh, I can turn it on and I can control its positioning from anywhere uh, and get that light pointed where we need it. Uh, also in the front I have probably the most amazing lights I've ever used, the Baja Designs uh, Go Light, or excuse me, uh, XL Pros. Uh, they are incredible. I'm running the cornering lens, uh, so you'll see it's diffused out uh, to give me a bit of a wider spread. Uh, and then I have amber uh, lenses that I can pop on for snow and uh, uh, dust conditions and so on to give me better contrast. Uh, at the top, I've got a siren net light bar. Uh, the outer edges are flashing ambers, which I'll show you in a minute, and the amber inner section is white. Uh, and then I'm running the Vision X. Uh, seven inch headlights, um, which are phenomenal. Um, they allow me to uh, get quite a bit better light pattern over stock and being LED, they last quite a bit longer. Uh, I've also uh, added a 24 volt worn uh, Xeon 10 winch running Masterpole line. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Masterpole. They're based in Bellingham, Washington and their stuff is incredible. Uh, I don't know if you can really tell in the video, but the synthetic line on this uh, is a lot like steel in its makeup and construction, and it is incredibly tough. Uh, and then I'm running a Factor 55 Ultra Hook uh, and uh, cost fairly. The um, bumper was uh, partially on it when I bought it. Uh, it looked quite a bit differently, it had a lot of tubing and was just kind of busy. So I've streamlined it way down uh, and worked with Mule Expedition Outfitters in Issaquah, Washington to do the uh, winch, smaller, much smaller winch cradle, uh, which allowed me to bring the winch down, get the center of gravity a lot lower. Uh, these corner guards, also built by Mule. Uh, and then the rocker guards and roof rack um, was a design that I put together and then worked with Joe. Uh, and sat down and we were able to drop it in his CAD program and sketch that up. And he did a lot of tweaking, really, to follow the lines of the, of the Pinsgauer. And, I mean, you can tell by looking at it, it is, it looks like it could have been stock. Um, it is a custom design, but it definitely could have come from the factory as, as clean as, as he did it. So, super impressed with the guys and, and uh, the girls at, at Mule. Uh, incredible team and, and great to work with. Uh, the search and rescue in the front bar is actually backlit. Uh, so it has amber lighting. I can uh, flip that on, especially at night. Uh, and uh, it's clear what my purpose is and, and why I'm on scene. Um, and then, uh, most recently from Mule, I just worked with them to implement a design I came up with to get both rotopacks on this side and 
uh, max tracks on the other side using brackets that are tucked up, I don't know how you can see them in here, that are tucked up under the edge of the canvas, but stuck out far enough that I can still bring the canvas all the way down. So it gives it a really clean look uh, if I pop the rotopacks off here. Uh, you can see how clean these brackets are. Uh, nice and small, clean, lightweight. Uh, all the bulk is carried on the um, on those side rails and uh, they pop on and off nice and easy. The other thing I did was I positioned the spouts facing forward and up so I can use a siphon tube, uh, an auto siphon tube, and I can uh, just feed that right into the gas cap there without having to take the, uh, the rotor packs off. Uh, so in a hurry I can just dump fuel over and keep going. Um, redone gas tank overstock, added storage. I work with TR Beadlock up in Mount Vernon. Uh, they, uh, I took it up there and they measured all of the clearances for the Willwood disc brakes uh, and the backspacing and then uh, the offsets, not the stock Pinsgauer offset, um, which surprisingly enough they support. Uh, they had the Pinsgauer pattern on hand and have done these for other Pinsgauer owners before. So mine are actually a Mercedes offset, which is the same as Volkswagen. Uh, they're 5 on 112, um, but they got all the measurements, they built these for me, powder coated them to match and, and sent them down and, and they're awesome. During the winter I can let basically all the air out of the tire and uh, these things will hold and I'm able to pop right on up. Uh, if you go to facebook.com forward slash pinsgauer, excuse me, forward slash sarpins, uh, S-A-R-P-I-N-Z, uh, you can see some of the snow photos so you can actually see uh, what it looked like. Uh, I have the local constabulary <laughs> wandering by and checking it out and waving. Uh, but uh, anyways, back to it. Um, so let me pop up onto the roof so you can see. The other, the other thing about this roof for a couple things. Number one, uh, it's all aluminum, so it's extremely lightweight. Uh, the whole thing only weighs about 200 pounds, uh, but it is very, very stout uh, because it's tied into the, the rocker guards are actually steel. Because it's tied into the rocker guards, uh, it is uh, incredibly strong, um, has lots and lots of support in all directions, and uh, um, works re really well. In addition to flush mounting the light bar uh, in the front and the search and rescue cutouts, uh, I also had Mule uh, put side lighting on. I have one that is uh, flood and then one that's more diffused for more area lighting. And so during a mission when we're scanning ditches and trails on either side looking for a trace of subject, uh, I can light up either side independently, either left or right. Uh, actually, before I go back on back, I'll come around and just show you the rest of the roof rack and then I'll pop up and show you. Uh, so embedded in the roof rack is uh, a traffic director. This allows me to send signal uh, from left to right or right to left, uh, so I can indicate um, kind of if there's a hazard or something to be aware of, uh, or I can flash it in various random patterns to, to let people behind know that there's a, uh, a hazard ahead or to slow down because there are searchers on, on scene. Uh, and then also flush mounted a, a 24 volt uh, backup camera system. Uh, I've got a couple extra cameras, I haven't decided where I'm going to mount those yet, um, but I do have one in the back for now, uh, which gives me an incredible field of view, which you'll see. Uh, and then also I've got a matching, I work with Mule to design this matching uh, rear tire carrier. Uh, I a, a couple more Baja designs, which gives me great lighting. And then, uh, not quite finished yet, uh, there's actually a couple of cubby holes um, built in. Um, they're just, the, the lids are all finished and, and done, they just need to go off to powder coat. That'll give me, again, a little extra storage uh, so I can uh, fit everything that I need to uh, while carrying on a mission. So let me pop up here on the top and you can see kind of some of what the rest of the roof rack looks like. Uh, the other thing that was part of the original design was these eight buckets. Um, so the back actually holds eight individuals, so eight searchers, uh, and they all have quite large 24-hour uh, or 48-hour packs, depending on how long a mission is. And so this has been set up so we can flip a pack up in uh, for each seat. There's one spot for each searcher. Uh, and then I'm working, you can see these tabs here um, that have been left in the corner of each. I'm working with uh, a designer to build some straps that allows me to quickly the key is we want to move fast, so something that allowed me to get those packs up and immobilized and, and strapped down quick. Um, 
up front here, this is where the cable for the um, antennas will feed in. Uh, there's one extra feed right now. Um, so those are watertight and they'll feed down in uh, underneath and into the top rack. You'll see the radio console in a minute. Right now I have the wires just running in underneath. I don't know if you can see it. I kind of can't see from here. Um, but I have the wires running down underneath uh, and then I'll switch that over here in, in one of the future updates. And then previously I had mentioned the rack, or the, excuse me, the mount for the spotlight. You can see the tabs and the connector there. And then on this side there's another tab and another connector so I can mount that either left or right. All right, let me hop back down. Uh, this top is custom made by Tough River Stuff in Colorado. Uh, the owner had uh, a, a Pinsgauer at some point. I'm not sure if he still has it. Uh, and so he had his team, or he, he worked with his team and, and built a custom soft top for his and kept the pattern. And, and now he still does two or three a year. There's pretty much always a waiting list to get one of these. And they're uh, insulated. There's a screen in each window. You, I don't know if you can see the screen in this. Kind of can see it behind the plastic there. And then the plastic is on Velcro with snaps in the corner so I can take the windows out once it warms up a little bit more. And then of course these also pop off and, and roll down and I can zip that down over top of um, to close it all up. So especially when I'm camping or overlanding in it, uh, I can lower the, the window shades to get some more, uh, get some more uh, light uh, diffusing during the evening or light protection at night. Uh, the quality of this top is unbelievable. Anybody who knows anything about sewing every time they see it is absolutely blown away by the quality of the stitching. Uh, back in the back, replaced lights out again for LED, um, primarily just for power consumption. Uh, when we're sitting on a mission, it will often be stationary for quite a long time uh, and I need to be able to have that power last as long as I can. Uh, opening up the back and going inside, uh, you can see it's a troop configuration. So there's four seats down each side uh, with seat belts for four on each side. They're kind of tucked back in at the moment. Um, those also fold flat. You can see the hinges here. Uh, so the cushions pull out uh, and drop down, uh, kind of wedged in there a little bit. But these guys pop off and drop down into the center here. Uh, and then the backs fold and flip over and it makes into a truck bed. Uh, so especially during a mission, when we have an injured subject, we can get them immobilized into what we call a litter, which is like a backcountry stretcher, uh, slide them in on one side uh, and strap them in uh, using the seat belts. And then I can still have some EMTs or attendants uh, managing the subject sitting on the other side, kind of making sure they're cared for as we go. Fire extinguisher, which will ultimately move over into this location. It's too far up right now. If a fire were to actually break out in the engine bay, it would take me a long time to get it, which is not good. Uh, but at least it's in the vehicle. That's a good start. Getting it closer to the door so I can get to it quickly is going to be more important. Uh, flipping over here, a couple of ammo cans. Uh, these are um, in a mount made by Swag Off-Road. Uh, and so basically the hinge cover folds down over and holds it in place. Um, and so I can keep more recovery gear in there and they're completely held in place by this pin and then a little footman's loop at the back. Um, so I can grab those and take them out if I need to take them out or they are completely immobilized. They don't move. They even added some magnets so the handles don't rattle. Uh, if you've ever used ammo cans, they tend to rattle. These are held in place with magnets so they don't rattle, which is fantastic. Uh, looking up front, uh, not all my gear is in, but some of the gear is in. Uh, so I have some emergency road flares there, they're LED road flares, my master pole recovery gear. One bag has uh, recovery ropes, uh, elastic recovery ropes uh, for uh, quick pulls, and then uh, my stationary recovery ropes and winch extensions and snatch blocks and D-rings, all the recovery stuff he needs in, in that bag. Some additional tree straps and D-rings and so on are in that red bag couple of Swiss Army blankets uh, for putting over subjects that are uh, cold. Uh, wheel chalk, uh, so that when you're winching, you can chalk your wheel. Uh, parking brake is good, chalk is even better. You want to make sure it doesn't move around. So I'm gonna close this up here. And come back around the other side. So I mentioned when I showed you the Rotopax that it also has max pack or max tracks mounts 
Uh, these are on similar brackets to the way the rotor packs are mounted. Uh, and then uh, I can keep a couple of sets of max tracks on here uh, for self recovery, especially in the snow. We use, we get some really yucky snow around here. Basically, it's like oatmeal. The top layer gets really dry and crumbly and uh, busts through and you frame out pretty easily. Not so much in this because it has portal axles, but uh, definitely in, in the soupy stuff, you can get stuck pretty easily. So, max tracks allows me to pop those under the wheels and uh, get myself out pretty easily. Um, like I said, I'm on Instagram and Facebook as Sarpins, uh, so you can look me up there. Um, and I guess the other thing I would say is I love these, I'm using the treadboard quick releases, uh, so they pop on and off really easily, um, which I really like. However, uh, if you look at it from the front, they stick out way too far. I'm gonna rip those things right off. So those just got finished. Um, so I think I'm gonna change that up. i am decided how I'm gonna manage that. Um, got the mule logo on here, show them a little love. Um, and uh, go with something a little little narrower. So I'm not, I'll either try to shorten these a bit uh, or all the Max Tracks ones. Uh, using them, I might use the Max Tracks pins. They stick out quite a bit less. I think they come out to about here. Uh, so I'll try a few things and, and figure out what works. And, you know, when you're working all custom, a lot of it's trial and error. Uh, so you can see all the wiring is run down here and into what I affectionately call the heater vent, um, which Mule came up with uh, to replace. There's a normally a grill cover right there for a heater if you run the auxiliary heater. Um, I don't, uh, so we use that space to bring all the wiring in. Uh, down here in the stock bins, um, one is the dual batteries for the 24 volt system. One of the three 12 volt subsystems, uh, so using a equalizer, I can pull uh, 12 volt off of just one of them, which I do not like to do. Uh, so I don't run very much with that setup, uh, just the fuel injection and, and maybe I'll put the um, power steering, when I put the power steering in, I might draw off that as well, I haven't decided yet. Uh, cut off, fuse for winch, uh, distribution blocks. Uh, so that's all there. And then the next one back, I think this one's quite a bit messier. Um, I have my Blue Ridge Overland Gear airbag, which I just recently got, which I love, especially if you run ARB stuff, it fits the ARB tire repair kit, plus all of your hoses and connectors and uh, fill up nozzles, all that stuff uh, is all, I have a couple wrenches that are specific to the size of the uh, air compressor, so if I need to, adjust anything or deal with any leaks I have that stuff there some rags bottle jack uh, and then the 24 volt air compressor and finally we'll go inside so if I open up uh, I'm running Mastercraft Baja RS uh, suspension seats these things are incredibly comfortable uh, I added some aftermarket 24 volt seat heaters uh, this thing does not put out much heat uh, so the seat heaters gives me a little bit of heat my idiot light that I added, yes, it's a mess under the dash. <laughs> That'll be a future, a future job will be to tackle all of that nasty spaghetti, um, but that has to come later. Uh, winch controller, uh, it's a wireless winch controller. Uh, and then the idiot light I was talking about, that's my reminder that I have not turned my master switch off. Turn the lights off while I'm thinking about it. Um, and that the whole system is still powered. Um, behind the driver's seat, you can see some of the wiring complexity it takes to run all of this crap. Uh, so there's 12 volt distribution blocks, 24 volt distribution blocks, uh, banks of relays there, and I, you can see behind here, there's more there. Uh, and then the blue, what looks almost like a amplifier, is uh, the um, aftermarket fuel injection computer. It's running fuel injection instead of dual carburation. Uh, and then a couple of 24 to 12 volt converters, and then a bunch of extra kind of loose wires in process. Uh, this wire is for uh, programming the fuel injection. I leave it hanging there because I tend to, right now as I'm kind of tweaking, I like to be able to access it quickly and plug in and uh, see what the computer's currently doing so I can figure out what I want to do. And of course I stepped in goose poop, nice. Um, uh, first aid kit, coming up, I'll come back to the headsets in a minute. Uh, so part of the, radio electrical system is rugged radio 
uh, intercom system. So you can see that here. Uh, that allows me to have driver to passenger uh, voice activated uh, comms. Um, because this is running on portal axles and all of the gearing that's in it, it gets really noisy at speed. So uh, these allow me to be able to talk to and hear my uh, co-pilot. And then also I'll be adding two additional headsets on the other side back there for the team leader of the team that I'm hauling when I'm, when I'm hauling a team, either a dog team or a, a, a um, ground team. Um, that way I can speak to the team leader, make sure that we're on the same page and heading to the same location, deal with any questions and so on. I have that tied into this radio switch. What I've done is I've sort of hacked the output and input of the rugged radio intercom system to allow me to tie that into radio one and radio two. Uh, so the front two radios, radio one and radio two, are VHF. Uh, so I can run uh, some ham frequencies I've got pre-programmed in and then all the commercial frequencies we use during a mission. And then the back one is a UHF. I have the UHF and the back VHF connected on a switch. Uh, so I can actually do um, crossband uh, from the UHF to the VHF. So if I need to use a UHF handheld to broadcast over VHF, I can uh, flip that switch, uh, which I keep in one of those uh, spy style rocker switch covers. I don't know what you call those, uh, but keep it from accidentally getting switched because I don't want that to accidentally come on. I want to be very intentional. Uh, I said I hacked the input and output. Uh, let me close this and I'll hop up in and show you. It'll be a little easier. Again, apologize for the shaky cam. It's sort of what I have with me. Um, so what I've done is I've taken the audio output of each of the front two radios and I've run those into these three-way toggle switches. And so on the inside, it's feeding audio to uh, speakers. So I actually have that audio playing in the cab. When I flip to uh, outside, it feeds that down into my siren system, um, which is located, I don't know if you can see it back there, but in behind the passenger seat. Um, and that way it allows me to take the output and feed that out to the radio rebroadcast the, over the PA system and I can listen while outside the vehicle. Uh, and then if I flip it to headset, it takes the audio and feeds that into the intercom system. It goes to the input on the intercom system so that I have, now I have either radio one or radio two or both uh, in my headset. Uh, and I pretty much always keep those on inside uh, unless I'm wearing the headsets. Um, for the transmit side, uh, so that's for the receive side, for the transmit side, I've used these cheap, I think they were $7 each or something, Amazon boxes, which came in white and I spray painted black uh, and then stuck white labels on them because that makes sense. Um, Ethernet manual switch boxes. So they're literally just a push button. Um, in one position they're on headset, the other position they're connected to the handheld mics uh, for, the, for the radios. So I can, again, when I'm listening inside the cab, I probably want to use the mic, and when I'm listening on the headset, I'm going to want to transmit over the headset. And when it's in headset mode, it allows me to use the microphone on the headsets uh, as the transmit mechanism using these push-to-talk buttons here. Uh, so pushing in and holding will cut off every other transmit, uh, and so the other passenger can't, the passenger can't transmit at the same time. Those get disabled and allows me to transmit. And again, that's all rugged radio stuff. Um, and uh, while I had to do a little bit of the input output, kind of figuring that stuff out myself, um, it, uh, the quality is phenomenal. Um, I'm fraction of what some of the systems are that kind of do all that stuff in a more automated way, um, but it gives me a lot of the same capability. Uh, coming further up front, you can see the input for the uh, backup camera. So I have, I leave that in kind of rear view camera mode. So it's always on. It gives me a nice wide view um, so I can see what's behind me. Uh, and then I have GPS. Uh, this is on a quick release, uh, so I can actually pop that off um, and move that over to my ATV. I have the same cradle on my ATV, uh, and I can just pop that GPS out of here and on my ATV, and I can continue up the trail. I only have one, one device I have to keep updated with maps, and also means I have one set of GPS tracks. Uh, to, to manage. All of this has been mounted using, I don't know if well you can see here, uh, using RAM mounts. Uh, so I've used RAM mounts for 
all my mounting stuff. Uh, this is military grade. Actually, if you look inside it, they have huge versions of these. I don't know if you've seen them, uh, but they're as big around as my arm uh, or bigger um, for inside tanks and stuff. And uh, so they're very rugged, very reliable and uh, versatile. I can move them around and uh, get those where I need them. Uh, I've got a RAM mount iPad case. Uh, so I keep a small iPad mini in here. So I use that for extra mapping and plotting. Uh, I have these magnetic mounts. I have no idea who makes them. It looks like Skosh. I got those at Costco, uh, so I can pop that stuff wherever. Uh, my phone has the same mounts, uh, so I can drop those. Um, extra gauges over stock. These are, I get asked about these all the time. These are circuit breakers instead of fuses. It comes stock with circuit breakers. Um, control for the traffic director in the back. Ignore those. <laughs> those are signs for one of our command vehicles. That's not for this vehicle. Uh, so those are just proofs that I need to get off to my board to look at and approve. And extra storage. I uh, keep things like battery, jump start kit, and some basic tools and those things in here. Um, so that's kind of the, the rundown. I guess the other thing I should show is I will turn on my lighting so you can kind of see what the lighting looks like out there since I talked about it earlier. So I've got emergency ambers there. I've replaced the LED bolt or the regular bulbs under the stock covers and put a two-way LED that I can either send the regular flasher signal, so it still works as a left and right blinker, uh, or I can send the emergency signal too uh, when I'm running my uh, emergency lights during a mission when that kind of visibility is needed. And then again, the lights up above. So that's kind of it. That's an overview of the search and rescue pin scour. Uh, there's a lot more I could say. Uh, people love the portal axles. This one has disc brakes, uh, loads of ground clearance. Uh, just an incredibly capable vehicle. Uh, gets a lot of people and a lot of gear in and, uh, and then gets injured subjects back out. It's personally owned. Uh, so I, um, as a search and rescue, volunteer we provide all of our own equipment and gear and so on uh, so this is all stuff i've designed uh, and bought and implemented uh, don't have sponsors uh, master pull was super awesome and giving us some extra discounts to kind of help uh, ram mount gave me one extra mount uh, so a little bit of odds and ends here and there from people whose stuff i really like um, but all the rest of the gear was purchased by me so i'm not shilling for anyone this is you know my experience with my vehicle uh, that I kind of put into this. My previous rig I owned for I guess about eight years was a four-door Jeep and then prior to that I've owned a bunch of FJ40s uh, and you can see more pictures on Instagram at Sarpins and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Sarpins. So if you have any questions hit me up in the comments or hit me on one of those locations and uh, like I said please vote for me if you're still watching this I'm assuming this will be up after um, but if you're if you haven't yet voted vote for the overland expo cool rides if you think it's a cool ride and uh i'll see you next time